in love with Tamar. You know, my brother's absolute sister. Oh, I can't stand it. That's how it sounds. That's how it's supposed to sound. As he, you didn't think the Hebrew was that funny, did you? Uh, Hebrew is hilarious. Uh, and can be very expressive if you express it strangely. Uh, but that's how it's supposed to sound. That's the quality that we're supposed to get across. That, that Amnon just can't stand it. His passions are stronger than his virtues. Ammon pro- proclaims love uh, towards his, his sister Tamar, but there is a much deeper and much more sinister passion in his life than Tamar. And that is going to come out. Amnon follows Jonadab's advice by faking this illness. Uh, there's Ferris Bueller faking his illness. I once uh, faked an illness uh, when I was in j- junior high. I, I was suffering from a series of stomach aches, and, and one day I got a stomach ache, and, and I thought, you know, when I had them, they were pretty bad, but the next day I was feeling pretty good, and I thought, hey, you know, I'll just fake the stomach ache, and I'll stay home. This will be great. And I said, oh, Mom, I can't go to school today. I have a stomach ache. And she says, all right, that's fine. They took me to the hospital and removed my appendix. Um, <laughs> I never skip school again. (laughs) Bad things happen when you fake an illness, and bad things happen here. As we've mentioned, you can see the sister-brother play in this story. Sister and brother are mentioned many, many times. It it was not impossible to marry your sister at that point in time. it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the thing that it is today. It was, it was a possibility. But what the author is trying to hammer home here is you do not behave toward your family this way. In their society, in their culture, you know, you treated your, your family with a whole lot more uh, respect and love and kindness and righteousness than you treated anybody else. At times you could treat other people like dirt, but you never treated your family like dirt. This was just a horrible thing. And here, Amnon is doing something absolutely horrible, and he is doing it to his sister. And the author just drives that, that, that uh, idea home uh, again and again. Amnon says, come, lie down with me. Normally, when these two phrases are put together, it is immorality that is happening. It's either rape or it is... Uh, adultery, or it is something bad. And he says right out front, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to do something that is highly immoral. Well, Tamar is a woman of integrity. She says this is not a good thing to do. You know, she's been uh, submissive to her father. She's been doing everything she can. She shows her care for her brother. And now she shows wisdom in trying to persuade him not to do this horrible thing. She starts off by saying, do not force me. Do not use force, do not use violence to accomplish your purposes. Israel is not Canaan. You know, Israel wanted a king, but the king could not be like the Canaanite kings. They had to be a godly king. And this family was supposed to be a godly family. They weren't supposed to behave like the other people in the world. They were supposed to behave like godly people. Israel was not Canaan. She says, it's going to ruin you and it's going to ruin me. You're going to have to pay for this crime, and I'm going to be disgraced because of it. She is doing her best to persuade him in every kind of practical, every kind of theological argument, every kind of of brotherly, sisterly connection that she can to persuade him not. And she mentions that marriage is not out of the question. She says, if you really want to do this, go ask David. Maybe he'll let me marry you. Follow the proper channels. Do what's right. But Amnon won't be stopped. He rapes her. A horrible, horrible crime in David's family. He dehumanizes her. He ravages her and leaves her, this desolate woman. And then the violence that is in him turns his love into hatred. And I don't know that it's just the violence that turns his love into hatred. It just might be the sin that is there. Uh, 
Rolling Stone magazine published a book a couple of years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, Rolling Stone is not a godly magazine. Not a, they didn't publish a godly book. But one of the things that they said was that couples who sleep together before marriage, who are dating and then have sexual relations, their, their relationship ends within days of their having sex. Because sex without commitment turns to anger. How many divorced couples do you know who, who you know, used to be in love with each other and then because of their sin, because they can't resolve their problems, end up hating each other? This is not, I don't think, an uncommon thing. Sin will turn the thing that you love into a thing that you will hate. It is just the way the world works. Just as his unrelenting love or lust or whatever it was, you know, drove the first part of this chapter, now his violence, his hatred will drive the rest of our story today. Amnon wants to drive Tamar away, throw her out, lock the door on this woman. But Israelite law required that a person who rapes a virgin in Israel, or who has sex with a virgin in Israel, is required to marry her, or at least to pay for her upkeep for the rest of her life. This was the law, and Tamar knew it. But Amnon will have none of this. He doesn't want her anymore because he has done something horrible. She uses this technical term for divorce and says by treating her now as a divorced and shamed woman, he will only make the situation worse. She is still pleading with him to do the right thing. She is still trying to reason with him. She is just amazing in all of this situation. She wears a richly ornamented robe, and I wouldn't mention it, but for one reason. The only other place this robe is mentioned is Joseph. He has one. Same word. It's the robe of a princess. It's the robe of a prince. And she tears it. And the ruin of the robe shows the ruin of her life. Well, David learns what happens. And he is absolutely furious about this whole situation. But then he does nothing. Nothing. He sits back. I'm mad, but I don't know what to do about it. I don't know what to do about it. I think his own consciousness of his own guilt, his own conscience bothers him, and it paralyzes him into not helping somebody else. How often have we heard, you know... We can't go confront somebody else about their sin because we're all sinners. That's true. We are all sinners. David has sinned. There's no doubt about that. But he has been forgiven. He has dealt with his sin. And we need to help other people in their sin. If we don't do that, if we let them get away with everything, if we don't check their, their lives, they will turn out worse than we are. They will never be forgiven. And Amnon and Absalom seem to die without ever having been forgiven. Absalom refuses to, to, to uh, talk to, to Ab Amnon, his brother, and he just sort of closes in and starts brooding on what he is going to do to Amnon. The narrative that began with love now ends with hatred. There is just this seething going on in Absalom's life. Absalom now starts to plot to kill Amnon. And he waits two years. <laughs> because as the saying goes, vengeance is a dish best served cold. You know, that is a scary thing. He just bides his time, waiting. I don't know, maybe he was solidifying his power base in the, in the community, in the, in the country. I don't think he's necessarily thinking about Tamar. I think he's thinking about being king. And so he's going, all right, I'm going to use this to become king. Once again, David is manipulated by his son Absalom. Oh, let me go out and we'll do this sheep shearing thing. And we'll have a big party. And, and David goes, okay, all right. You know, I know this is dangerous to let Amnon go out there with you, but uh, I'll let you do it anyway. And uh, Absalom kills his brother. Now, rape is condemned in the Old Testament. There's no doubt about it. It's a horrible crime. And it is punishable, but it is not punishable by death. Absalom goes way beyond what is required by the law in killing his